there will come a time in your Affinity Photo for iPad Life where you're going to want to add an accent color to a black and white image or you're going to want to add a hint of color somewhere in an image but not everywhere else on the layer. Using Affinity Photo, you just select an area, then you use the Paint Bucket tool to drop in a new color. Uh, <clears throat> that's a, that's a, not, no, no, not, ha not happening. This is probably not what you want because as you can see, anything inside the selection is now filled with that color and you've lost color depth and shading information. So not so much with that idea. So how do you add color to a selection area and not the whole layer or image in Affinity Photo for iPad? Easy. Follow along in this tutorial and I'll show you a six step process to do just that. However, before we get started, if you like these videos, please remember to hit that like button down below. It helps out the channel and tells the YouTube gizmo machine that this is an important video. Not to mention it's also a nice thing to do. Also, it should be noted that everything you're seeing in this video can be done with the desktop version. It's just that the menus and positions of functions have moved. The functionality, on the other hand, is exactly the same. In order to show off this technique, we have to do a little bit of prep work beforehand using a true black and white image. Fortunately for you, I've already got a video on how to generate said true black and white image, which is linked down below in the description and up here in the upper right. If you want to follow along with the image I'm using here, I've linked it down below in the description so you can download it. So let's get into how you selectively add color to a black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad. Oh, and remember to hit that subscribe button down below for more great content. Step one, select a color from the Color Studio palette. That's the third icon down on the right. In this case, I've chosen a red that I like. However, if you're wanting a very specific color, you can enter its RGB hex value by changing the color selector from color wheel, as you're seeing me do here, to RGB hex slider. And then just below the blue slider, you'll see a hex value as shown here. Click that and you'll be presented with a selector entry window. And now you're able to enter the exact color value you want in hex values. Just as a side note, if you've got a specific color that you want to use from a brand to incorporate into your image, here's a site that I use that's really helpful for just this purpose. Go to brandcolors.net where you can select any brand and the colors that are used by that brand. So if you wanted to use, say, a Facebook blue, or a Pinterest red, or an Aer Lingus green, you can easily copy that color by selecting any color on the page and it auto copies the hex color value to your clipboard. However, because we're working on an iPad, iPad OS doesn't allow you to copy and paste directly into a selector, such as the RGB hex value here. So you'll have to enter that value manually. In this case, I'm using FF0000. Step two, from the photo persona, create a rectangle with the rectangle tool. That's the second icon from the bottom on the right side of your screen that looks like a shaded box. Select the rectangle tool and then hold and drag around the area that you're wanting to highlight. In this case, I'm choosing the girl's dress. Make certain that the rectangle that you're creating is slightly larger than the area it encompasses. To be clear, the reason why we're creating a shape is that this shape is going to become a masking area so that we can target a very specific area in our image. To be fair, you don't have to use a rectangle. You could use any one of the pre-created shapes if those work better for you, or more importantly, and what we're going to do here is create our own shape with the pen tool like you're seeing me do here. Step three, from the layer studio, we need to change the blending mode of the shape that we just created from normal to soft light. In order to change the blending mode, we would select the circled three dots icon that's right above the layers list. This will open up the layers options palette. And from there, you'll see where it says normal. That's the blending mode selector. Click on that and it will pull up a side pop-up to allow you to select a new blending mode, or in this case, soft light. Step four, once that's done, we need to turn off the layer. Now, this step is not necessary, but doing so will make things a little bit easier visually so that you're not confused in step five. Just as a side note, if we were to expand this shape to fill the entire image or to create a fill layer from the Layer Studio palette and then selecting a blending mode, 
This would create what's called, in printing terms, a duotone. This is where black and another color are used to accentuate an image. That are the color, aside from black, is the color that you've selected previously. However, that's not what we're after here. But as you can easily see, if this were, then we'd be done by now when we could easily go get some coffee from today's sponsor. Oh, wait, we don't have a sponsor. Oh well. But if you wanted to sponsor these videos, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm open. Step five. Now we change our persona to the selection persona, if it's not done already. And then we select the smart selection brush tool, which is the third icon on the left. And then we select the girl's dress. For brevity's sake, I'll quickly do that now. Before we get to the magic part, and the whole reason why you're here, please remember to hit that notifications bell to be notified every time I upload new content and there is a boatload of new content coming. And now, as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. Step six, now we need to create a mask from our selection. To do this, we would make sure that the shape that we created in step two is highlighted in the layer studio list. Then we select the plus icon just above the layers list. This will drop down a menu and then you select, here comes the fun part, mask layer. And we are done. Wait, so where's the color? Remember in step two when we turned off the colored shape that we created? Now we need to turn it back on and viola, Margaret. Ah, voila. A selective color, you're yeah, welcome. There are lots of use cases for this feature, more so than I can count, but I'm sure you can come up with a few on your own. And that's how we add a selective color to a black and white image in Affinity Photo for iPad. I hope you found this video helpful and instructive. If you did, please consider giving it the old thumbs up and then showing it a little bit of sub love. But if you didn't find it useful or helpful, then try setting the volume to zero and just watching the pretty pictures. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video for Affinity Photo for iPad. Bye.